That would definitely be the, the, like I said, the downside of these is just their incredible weight. I could see if you're doing this full time all the time, uh, that would, that would really, uh, start to have an effect on your back. I would think. Today's video is brought to you by our good friends over at Nationwide Industries, the Fence Pros number one choice. And they are this Fence Pros number one choice for a couple of reasons. One, we love using their Keystone Traverse latches. They're easy to install. You simply bolt them onto the post. No drilling for rods or cutting the rods required. It's a pretty straightforward installation process. We also love using their full line of galvanized hardware. It shows up quickly and reliably. All right, guys, today's video is titled Massive 175 foot fence install in just two days this week at DNJ Projects. So, if you guys watch the channel at all, you know I love DNJ Projects content. I like them a lot. You guys should check them out as well. Now, this video is like an hour long. So, we're actually going to just watch a short snippet, give a reaction to it, and see what you guys think. Without further ado, let's check it out. This is all being changed, but with timber panels this side. First, one, two, three, four bays. They're still being timber. We're going to use the lean to because obviously that's holding up that whole thing. We do not want to be messing with that. So we're going to use those posts. They're absolutely solid. This post here that is staying. Maybe this type of fence, I love watching these videos because this type of fence is incredibly interesting to me. So it's a it's a horizontal. Now they'll call these um, feather edge. So if you if you're looking top down, so if you took a picket put it on in and you're looking from the top down this picket, it is thicker on one side than it is at the other, such as like a feather or an airplane wing would be, right? So feather edge, and then they're overlap to where the thin edge would overlap the thicker edge of the next picket and so on. I like this a lot. It's In the United States, horizontal fencing has really caught on. We're doing a lot of horizontal fencing. This is that, but in pre-made panels. Yeah, I think this is incredibly interesting. Now they use now, it looks like these might be wood posts or timber posts. Uh, typically, they would use, so D&J, if they're doing a new install, would use concrete posts with a channel. So these panels would slide down the channel to where they would be held in place. It's a really interesting way of building fence. We're just going to extend it a little bit taller because the fencing is going to be taller. This post is coming out because that's going to be the, la, 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 come on, the concrete post running all the way down. So we've got about one, two, three, four bays of concrete. It's going to be a bit taller. So we've got to use extra gravel boards, extra gravel boards, extra gravel boards to get it taller, get it six foot from the... Now, gravel boards are what... So in the Southern United States, you see kickboards used a lot. Uh, so it's what we would call a kickboard or, or a rot board. Um, so in this case, it is a concrete board that's at the bottom that these panels sit on top of. So it gives them a separation layer between the ground, the aerobic zone that typically causes rot, and the wooden fence panel, thus extending the life of the panel. So obviously we're taller again. So fencing is going to be sort of this height, six foot from ground level. Did that one uh, a few months ago now. Jordan and Ant, Chelsea's Ant. Concrete fencing is going to start from here. Because when you look at the post, we can take that out and then we can put a piece of timber there, get the fencing to match into it. Probably sit a bit further than the concrete, but I'll do a nice little return. And that's why that's staying. Can you see that concrete? it's haunched up into the blocks and i don't want to take that concrete and then peel that away definitely don't want to be doing that guys because of course we don't want this driveway moving this trellis that's staying obviously because of this we've got a climber panel's not attached to it no more it's been detached but these were going off this this probably put a timber on the wall somewhere somewhere here boundary post is there as well so as long as we're here and obviously it's already got a timber there we might attach a timber to it bring it higher because this is going to be height wise around about say mortar line six foot running cross step 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 all the way down running to that concrete post right there don't need a string line these are actually really this is actually a really good size fence really good size yards for uh, that area so a lot of the times when we're watching uh, dnj's content the the yards or as they would say the gardens are much smaller so it's interesting seeing a, a much larger yard or garden yeah it's gonna be a good job it's a little bit cold today you can tell that it is winter january a little bit colder today but it ain't gonna get done itself is it guys it's not gonna get done itself so let's get the tools we've got some here and let's get cracked on Look at the, the grade change between the neighbor's yard and their yard. So it steps down quite a bit. 
So that's probably another place they're going to use these gravel boards. So they'll use the gravel boards a lot like we would use uh, landscape timbers or or blocks to shore up shore up grade changes. So you see two bags of concrete. So it's got a good amount of concrete around it. So hopefully you can see this guys. We've got our first post in. That's gonna be the height of this bay. Looks tall now, but that is only a five foot bay. So when six foot comes up, it will re run in across at six foot. I'll just show you from the next door. So I'm six foot now and I'm standing pretty close to height of this. It might be slightly taller by a couple inches, but this is the plan and this is the reason we've done this. We've dropped this post in. 10 foot post that is, drop this in. There's gonna be gravel boards running across here now. One, two. There's gonna be a couple of gravel boards covering here to cover this gap. Some would say, why did you not just start over here? Well, we've got six foot gravel boards. And if we started here, we would be too short over there. So start here. Then we've got around about a six foot, give or take bay, custom panel anyway. Jamie can make it to whatever we need. So that's the beauty of that. But we decided to start with this, make everything fit to height. If we need a panel that's customized a few inches, we can do that just need to trim a little bit of this conifer like it already is done. So that shows, this shows exactly what I'm talking about. It's got a channel in the post. So the posts are like an H post where the panel would slide in between. Uh, concrete posts are obviously incredibly durable now. The trade-off is they're going to be pretty heavy, so that would be the one, you know, the one downside to this style. But uh, longevity would be incredible. But yeah, we keep cracking on, guys. We'll get this first bay or the gravel boards in at least with the magic fingers. These ones right here. So we've done two and a half here, guys. The reason we've gone two and a half, it's going to step across to level, and then this one's going to step down six inches. Didn't want to step down a foot because then we're sort of pointless. So lads have got a panel. They're going to walk the way around there, make it safe, and then we're going to plonk it on top. It's going to sit. I'd say roughly around about here, guys, six inches. But like I say, these two are going to run relatively level to top of post. Done it for the privacy as well. Obviously, that's the whole point of this fence. Don't want to be able to see over, so we're doing privacy. Eh? This one's going to step down and then natural step down. It won't be as low as that post down there. It will be a bit taller. But yeah, let's get this in. It's a little bit awkward, as you can see, this one. But we'll get it done either way. So... What's also interesting, they'll build these section by section. So similar to how we would build like an aluminum fence, uh, they would build it section by section. They would set the post, they would insert what they're calling the gravel boards there at the bottom, and then they'll go on the other side, mark their post where it needs to be dug and dig it out. So they won't actually dig all their posts in the beginning, set posts, and then come back and finish it. It's kind of interesting to see another uh, process. Nice and steady on that post because obviously it's just set. There's the gap that we're on about, guys. Around about six inches. So it's a nice natural step. Get you on a time lapse. And we'll get that post in. Look how tight it is to this. We did think about sliding a panel in, getting one made. I mentioned it dinner. But look at that. Look how much conifer we'd have to take away. Don't fancy that. So we've gone with a six inch option instead. That would definitely be the, the, like I said, the downside of these is just their incredible weight. I, I could see if you're doing this full time, all the time, uh, that would, that would really uh, sort of have an effect on your back, I would think. So then, as you can see, two and a half gravel board there, nice and tall. This one is two gravel boards like we were planning for, pretty much lining up to the other gravel board. Yes, there's going to be a bit of a drop there anyway. So one foot drop, round about, oh, I'm pointing at it, it looks good there. Round about there, obviously this is a five foot panel. Decided to do the drop at the conifer, so you can't really see too much of the drop. If we did the drop over there, you would see more because obviously... You can see it from the grass, but we decided to do the drop now. We'd always have to drop, obviously, because we've used an extra six inch. Yeah. Looking nice. Might have to take a few cuts, yeah. yeah. We're going to have to cut a little bit of that conifer. So let's get that done now. Get the post in. 
Who have another one, guys? Wish I had some snappy fingers like that just to snap that post in place. That'd be pretty slick, huh? Little windy, sorry, guys. Just back filling now on post to height. We were going to run into that, but after having a look at the height difference, we've decided that we're going to put a post in there, concrete post in. It's going to be taller than that post, but it's just going to be next to that post, just so we can keep the height. We didn't want to do a slope off down to that one because, again, you're losing the height there. So we're going to drop this one down as normal, natural steps. It's probably around about there, I'd say. Somewhere around about there. Looking off the ground, we can probably six inches again pretty much like what we did over there drop it down and get it there so let's get it i think what we'll do is all well, guys because we haven't got the panel or we have we can customize one we'll get the post and the gravel boards in with jordan's magic fingers to get the post and the gravel board in right there and there we have it this post here is way out so we've made our post right set it at that just chucked a bit of rockery from there down it at the moment so everything stays nice and tight that can always come out later it doesn't really need to so we'll probably just leave it there but if anyone does want to move that that can be moved this customer or this neighbor has got a nice free fence as well now that was for the neighbor to take the hedge out because it's their hedge hence why the customer's gone in front before previous level of fence and obviously they've gone in on their land as you can see the boundary post we've been asked just to leave these here so that's exactly what we're going to do so there's no problems of moved into my garden sort of boundary issues we don't want no boundary issues with this one. Oh, it's definitely windy guys sorry about that yeah nice concrete fence running across got some gravel boards for this cut bit here because this is obviously going to be a timber panel that runs across sort of there it's going to look a little stranger because we can't put a timber panel to the same height as ours because it would be too high and there's no gravel board going there so yes it's going to look a little bit different because it's two types of fences meeting in the middle timber to concrete but we've got to do timber because look would you fancy putting gravel boards right there because i definitely don't so yeah i'm just going to do a little cut here just get that gravel board to sit a bit more flush because it's a bit kicked off at the moment and then we might put two on there i'm not sure yet with like a small timber post behind it to hold it in place i've not decided yet basically only putting something there because i might put rockery there actually to hold it in place i'm only putting something there obviously because the timber is going to be somewhere there and there'll be a gap so yeah i'll let you know what yes. we do concrete's pretty much done we're ahead of schedule need to get these panels out hasn't there magic fingers on these mate yeah so the fencing is done you can't see it because we just cracked on and got stuff done well guys let me know what you thought about the fence definitely a unique fencing style here in the states for us it's i'm sure it's very common there but for us it's a unique style i think it's worth looking into i really had to figure out uh how those snappy fingers work over there i need to go maybe take some lessons because that is a lot like magic well guys until next time i'm joe Evers, the fence expert reminding you that good fences make good neighbors and I'll see you next time.